Okay, we are broadcasting live from uh, Port Ritchie, Florida, where I am, and Cohasset, Massachusetts. Did I say it right? Yes, you did. Uh, welcome, everybody. Thanks for being here today um, and uh, sharing your time with us. Uh, we're going to let the Zoom call populate here. In the meantime, uh, do a little bit of housekeeping for Zoom. You all are probably Zoom aficionados at this point. Uh, please feel free and we encourage questions throughout the presentation and uh, in the chat box or the Q&A, whatever you're comfortable with or however you've connected with us. And please feel free to ask anything. We'll get to as many as we can. Uh, we also are recording this as a matter of a record. We can't see or hear you, but we can see your chat and your Q&A. And for those of you who uh, are on and would like to fast forward through it and see the parts that you love, uh, you can do that after on the Family Office Insights YouTube channel. And then share it with others who you might think benefit from hearing the presentation from our friend Bob. Um, I have. Uh, the nexus of connectivity to Bob is often how these things come to Family Office Insights in the community through a, a lawyer friend who has been a friend for a long time, and so we're grateful for that. And uh, so we have uh, uh, an hour today, and uh, we're going to have uh, Bob give you a short introduction and then go into his presentation. And please, again, feel free to ask any questions that come to mind. Uh, during the presentation and welcome everybody and thank you for joining us today. Bob? Arthur, um, thank you for setting this up and, and thanks to everybody who's um, logged in. Uh, good afternoon. Um, Saltair Hotels is uh, is me, uh, Bob Thomas and Deirdre Savage. Uh, Deirdre has a family obligation and, and couldn't be here so you've got me. Um, the agenda today uh, I'll talk a little bit about our backgrounds and how we got into um, the hotel business, a little bit about our first uh, hotel as a kind of a case study and an overview of some projects we've done since then, and then um, looking ahead. So um, as I said, um, Saltair is uh, Bob and Deirdre, Bob Thomas and Deirdre Savage. We both uh, have backgrounds in historic preservation and housing. Um, we both studied historic preservation at the graduate level. Um, I went right out of school and worked for a consultancy doing restoration plans for monuments like, like this one, uh, Grand Central, and uh, soon went into um, working for, in the private uh, sphere, working for a um, guy who uh, owned a bunch of warehouses around Union Square in New York, converting them to residential use, and um, eventually moved uh, up to Boston where I am now, um, building um, urban infill boutique housing projects. Um, my um, thesis uh, was that there are buyers, enough buyers who care about design that I could do better than the next guy if I built something that um, was design oriented. And that um, proved true. Uh, I did well with these projects, typically sold that numbers better than my competitors and, and tended to sell out before I was done. Um, meanwhile, Deirdre was in Cambridge, um, also building housing. She'd formed a partnership, a design build partnership, and they built hundreds of units of, of housing in Cambridge uh, that's still valued to this day. One of her partners um, from that time uh, is, is one of our lead investors now. Um, uh, we both, um, we were introduced by, by friends. Um, when I moved up here, uh, we both have an interest in uh, what we call ugly and unloved buildings. Um, we, uh, uh, we, we feel that these buildings represent an opportunity um, that's overlooked um, by others who don't tend to see past the, the building, um, the, 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 the condition of the building. Um, this, uh, uh, this building here uh, is our first, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, um, is our first attempt at a uh, hotel project that, that didn't take. Um, we um, were shown this building as a housing project. Um, we, uh, our plan was to convert this building to housing, but when we 
um, walk through it, we discovered that it, um, it really lays out and feels like a hotel. Um, uh, and so we commissioned plans and, um, uh, and designs to convert this, this building to a hotel. But um, surprising, unsurprisingly, um, we uh, were unable to um, put the financing together because we lacked experience um, in, with hotels. And if we called that number, would it still be for sale? <laughs> <laughs> um, this eventually did get converted, uh, uh, Arthur, to housing. Um, uh, this this uh, this was uh, it, it sort of whetted our appetite. Um, this this building lays out like a hotel. Uh, it has individual rooms with um, each with their own bathroom. Has back of house, uh, common areas, elevators. And we thought, wow, this would make a great conversion to a hotel. Um, but uh, we knew nothing about hotels. We didn't know about ADR. We didn't know about Revpar. We uh, we, we didn't understand the business, and so we couldn't put the financing together for the deal. Um, but we thought, wow, that was really interesting. So the, the next um, project is the one that we did get done. Um, Deirdre found on LoopNet um, this fairly uh, grim uh, listing on the right uh, for a 129-room hotel in P-Town, uh, P-Town and Cape Cod. P-Town, you may know, is this super vibrant um, market uh, destination resort um, with a, a history of whaling and wonderful architecture, downtown filled with uh, art galleries and, and music venues and great restaurants. Um, this had been a Holiday Inn. Um, here's a brochure from its heyday as a Holiday Inn on the left. Uh, it had become uh, over time the hotel of last resort. It had lost its flag. Um, it had um, uh, still operated by the man who built it back in the 60s, now 80 years old. He's selling this hotel through a, uh, a residential broker who's a friend of his. So it's not being marketed to um, hospitality people. It's just out there on, on LoopNet with this sort of sad listing. Um, and Deirdre convinced me uh, to go take a look. There's almost uh, no financials available on the hotel, which is a feature of a lot of the owner-operated owner stuff that we look at. Um, the, the owners tend to, uh, owner-operators tend to not keep their financials in um, an industry standard format that tracks performance like uh, occupancy, rate, rev par. Um, they tend to co-mingle um, their own finances, I mean, excuse me, their own expenses, uh, their own lives with these hotels. So it's hard to tease out operating uh, performance. And that, along with the quality of this listing, excluded a lot of um, potential buyers. So um, uh, we, we go down there, Deirdre convinces me to go down and we discover this sort of sad hotel. Uh, these super dated rooms with the burgundy bedspread, old TV, this lounge. Um, this lounge would have a view of the ocean, uh, but the folding wall that uh, separated it from that view had gotten stuck in the 80s and they'd never unstuck it. So this thing sat there behind that wall all that time. Um, however, what we also discovered was this amazing site, a hotel with basically superb bones. The superficial parts are, are dated and are worn, but the hotel itself is pretty great. Four and a half acre site, uh, a mile out of downtown, right on Cape Cod Bay, uh, wonderful water view, all this parking, uh, spacious common areas. Uh, we think this is a really uh, perfect candidate for a uh, uh, for a, for a redo. Um, and we've been looking at what others had done with these uh, motel type properties uh, to to infuse new life uh, into them. You know, and again, our, our interest in these ugly and unloved buildings, we really feel like often they're, they're overlooked and through some creativity, um, they can be reused at a number that makes a lot of sense. Um, this is uh, Phoenix on the upper left in San Francisco by Liz Lambert of Bunkhouse Group. The ACE uh, 
Palm Springs in the lower left, uh, the Tally Ho in Scottsdale, and um, uh, the Postcard Inn in St. Pete's Beach, all uh, old motel buildings that had been uh, very successfully um, uh, reworked and made exciting and new again. Uh, so we were able uh, with with the, um, it had been called the Cape Inn, to um, put the hotel under agreement and put together a capital stack that included an equity partner who saw the vision and importantly had a hospitality background so we could learn from them. Um, we put the hotel under agreement and closed at what we imputed to be about a 10 cap on historic NOI. Again, um, hard to know exactly because the financials are so intertwined with um, the seller's life, but um, you do a little forensic accounting and we think we closed at about a 10 cap. Um, excuse me. Um, we spent the first summer running this hotel, um, putting together our, our team, our architect, our operator, our branding partner, food and beverage people, um, even a, a gallery partner who uh, we would have run um, rotating exhibits uh, through the, the hotel's common areas. Uh, we uh, closed the hotel in October and um, did the work and opened uh, in uh, May of 2011. The... When, you, when you bought it mm. and put it under agreement, did it have 20% occupancy, 50, 60, 70? I, I honestly don't remember the, the occupancy except for that it was, um, the occupancy was was okay. I mean, probably below market. It's really the rate is so much lower than it could be. Um, this is the hotel of last resort for people who are showing up on a Friday uh, in P-Town with no reservation. And they just line up and hope they can get a room. These would be- Take a shower. Take a shower. Yeah. They bring their own beer and set, in the, set up a, a lawn chair out in front of the room and drink their beer instead of the beer from, from the bar. Uh, it, it just had a ton of, um, I think more than anything, rate potential here. Um, of course, you know, at peak times, um, a hotel like this is going to do pretty well in occupancy. The, the part where you start to do better is in, in non-peak areas uh, of the year, uh, midweeks, shoulder seasons, um, and that's where they would have really been um, flagging in terms of their performance. Uh, that's a good question. Um, so we, we reopen. Um, here's the lounge. That's that lounge with the wall removed. Um, it's the same box. It's uh, the carpeting pulled up, the concrete floor polished, new furniture, new lighting, art, this fireplace. Uh, we reopened um, with an all-in cost of $86,000 a room for uh, just more than $11 million, which is less than half replacement cost for this hotel in a uh, super high barrier to entry market. This hotel could not be built again according to uh, current zoning code. Uh, we uh, created a new uh, uh, name, we had a new name. The old name had very little brand equity, we felt. Um, a new logo, which is intended to evoke, but not copy the, the kind of vibe of the old Holiday Inn. Uh, we, created this fire pit, um, removed whole sections of asphalt, um, had too much asphalt to tell, um, created this fire pit, which was a huge success, so much so that it got copied all over town within about a year. Um, took away a bunch of, uh, uh, of fixed shop front glass and put in these, these folding doors I'd shown earlier. So the breezes come in, um, you can go in and out to the fire pit and down to the beach. And um, we won uh, Best Cape Boutique Hotel from uh, Boston Magazine in our very first year. Uh, and we're also named uh, a, a top beach escape by Travel and Leisure in their world's best issue that year. So I'll show you a few before and after pictures because they're, they're kind of fun. Uh, original room. New room, again, it's just the same box with new finishes. Uh, Where would you like to stay? <laughs> yeah. I, know I mean, the potential was so obvious. Uh, 
it doesn't have to be like it is on the left. Yeah. It's easy um, with some imagination. The, uh, the lounge, again, the same, same room, same view. Um, funny story. So this, these sofas in the, in the original hotel lounge um, were cast offs that the owner had bought secondhand. And when we moved them out, we discovered they actually were pullouts and still had the sheets on them. Uh, new sign uh, to evoke beach fencing, sand fencing, uh, and this, this fire pit with the folding doors uh, before the early on, before the dune grass uh, grew in. Uh, and this is just a fun place. People have a ton of fun at this hotel. This is this group of women who rented the hotel, the entire hotel for a weekend and had these parties and these aerobics classes. And here's the pool. And a, and a finished room. In terms of financial performance, uh, uh, total revenues in, in 2011, which is a partial year, we opened up a Memorial Day weekend, uh, we're up 24% from the seller's uh, prior year uh, gross revenues. By 2012, we were up 56%, and by 2015, um, revenues were up 100% from the seller's last year, from 1.6 million to 3.2. Uh, and when our investors were ready to exit the deal uh, with a quality asset, with detailed industry standard accounting, um, we were able to attract an institutional cl class of buyer who would not have looked this, at this hotel previously. We had interest from multiple suitors and sold the hotel eventually to a national owner operator for 15.5 million, which represented a six cap on our trailing NOI. And remember, we went into this thing at about a 10 cap. And what year was, did you end up selling it? Uh, 2018. Uh, so we learned some things here. We learned, we learned that hotels for us are more fun than condos. Um, condos, you just finish and you're done and you sell them. And hotels have all these wonderful moving parts. Um, we learned a lot about the hotel business. Um, owning and operating this hotel and working with our equity partner. Uh, we learned that we're pretty good at the, the independent hotels, getting the look and feel right, getting the art right, the music right. We like that with independent hotels, there's no franchise cost and we can be flexible to respond to the location. Uh, and we learned that we can make money by um, making targeted cost-effective improvements, um, by professionalizing operations, and by um, professionalizing marketing. And we could uh, learn, we could uh, exit at a, at a lower cap rate than we went in at by um, marketing the hotel with a quality uh, hospitality broker and by presenting industry standard operating history. So uh, we set out to do this again. Um, and again, would be focus on owner operated hotels in great locations with high barrier to entries, uh, leisure markets with sophisticated demographic, avoiding high cap rate environments. Um, we don't do projects in gateway cities where you buy at a three or four cap. Uh, we avoid food and beverage as a profit center. We're happy to have F&B as, as an amenity, um, but we don't wanna rely on it. We don't look at hotels where half of the revenues come from F&B. Uh, and uh, we also don't rely on new construction. We're happy to have potential for expansion, but we want to be in for less than replacement costs. So, um, Bob, do you, do you see the question there? If not, I'll ask it. Please, yes. So, Maxi has a question 10% going in cap with mm -hmm. the low occupancy and low rate, or based on year 2012? 10% cap on their numbers. Yeah. Uh, any other questions yeah. that I'm missing? Okay. Uh, th this hotel, uh, the Shire Woodstock, different animal, but fundamentally similar uh, high barrier to entry market. Uh, uh, the people just come 12 months a year, maybe not so much in November, but um, it's a year round market. Uh, anchored by the Woodstock Inn, um, Woodstock anchored by the Woodstock Inn, which is owned by the Rockefeller family and sets the uh, high bar for rate. 
Um, this hotel has uh, 40, when we bought it has 43 rooms and a 4,000 square foot owner's residence. Uh, we purchased this for uh, 4.35 million, which is a um, slightly better than a 10 cap on uh, sellers uh, trailing uh, NOI. Uh, this hotel is different in that we bought it with uh, a ton of repeat business. People really like this hotel. Um, so our guiding mantra was, if it's not broken, don't fix it. But it was dated. Um, so our improvements were basically a process of removal. Um, these rooms had yellow flowered wallpaper, flowered bedspreads, super ugly art, kind of toned the thing down, um, brought in uh, uh, amenities like a high, super high-speed Wi-Fi, um, charging ports by the bedsides that hadn't bid there, you know, so you don't have to crawl under the bed to plug your phone in. Uh, Roku streaming devices for the TVs, Riverside seating. There's a wonderful Riverside at this hotel, games, cornhole and stuff. People love. Um, we kept the name, a lot of brand equity here. Um, people had a fondness for this hotel, um, but created a new updated logo. Uh, shots of the rooms um old-fashioned new england which people really respond to uh, and, and come back for year after year we did um convert the the 4,000 square foot owner's residence to seven more rooms so now we've got 50 rooms and created this uh this gathering space which can be rented independently so you can rent a bunch of rooms and have this gathering space and effectively make a suite of any size that you want. Um, probably the most important thing we did here was a create a robust marketing plan, a new website, a great booking engine. Um, we professionalized operations, of course, uh, and, and revenue management. Uh, and the result of this financially was improving uh, revenues from a million dollars gross revenues the year um, prior to our purchase to uh, 1.5 in 2019 and growing the value from a basis of 4.9 to um, uh, an appraised value of over 6 million in uh, in early 2020 when we refinanced the, the hotel. Um, Is this also made... privately owned uh, or institutionally owned? I'm sorry, what is privately owned versus? Was this privately owned privately property. owned yeah we, we we like to buy our hotels from um, owner operators because we feel typically there's some money left on the table because they're not often using the um the most advanced marketing techniques maybe not up to speed on um digital marketing uh mostly not doing effective revenue management so yeah this, and this is where young uh, wonderful people they, they 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 had a good business they they ran the place well but they they just um weren't taking advantage of all the available to, to maximize the revenue. Uh, we've made um, distributions to our investors um, from our first year of ownership uh, through 2019, averaging 13% uh, cash cash for this hotel. Okay, um, Stowe. Stowe is a market we've been looking at. It's a lot like Woodstock, uh, affluent demographic, year-round uh, market. Um, we heard about this hotel through word of mouth. We think this is the best hotel in Stowe, not from a pure luxury perspective, but from a getting away from it, vibe, relaxation, and beauty perspective. This, this is a great place. Um, it had been let go. The, the, the owners were super undercapitalized um, and uh, it, it needed to be, to be improved. They, they ran their lives and their children's lives. This was sort of an employment program for the kids through this hotel. Um, so not at all professionally managed. Um, so our, our uh, oh, we bought this for 3.65 uh, million at a, at a cap rate that was really impossible to know that the seller's life was so intertwined with this hotel. It was really, and the record so poorly kept, it was hard to, to know what, what business he was actually doing. Uh, we kept the name, but created a new logo 
and uh, improve the interiors, which are these wonderful interiors. I'm actually standing here. Uh, my backdrop is the, the fireplace that we so often. Um, they had sort of this mismatch of, of furniture and a big teddy bear collection, and it was a strange kind of interior design. Uh, we, we really want our interiors to reflect and draw from the architecture of the, of the hotel. Um, like at the Harbor Hotel, we had um, rotating exhibits in partnership with a local museum of, of modern art, a uh, few before and afters uh, of the interiors. It's wonderful room with the structure uh, of, of this tree coming up through the floor. Uh, this light filled room looking out over the mountains. Uh, new staff uniforms, which we cribbed from a um, terrific restaurant in Zermatt, uh, kind of made the place a little sleeker, a little more modern. Another view. Um, we even had a, a, a partnership with the local beekeeping club who kept this is a 20 acre site, kept hives on our property way down below in this meadow. So if you're a guest, you can see the beekeepers coming and going and harvesting the honey. Uh, which then appears on the menu and it appears as part of a drink. So it's this kind of you know fun thing if you're if you're a guest there. Uh, and then here's a nighttime view. Um, we've completed the interiors. We're getting buzz, um, getting nice reviews on TripAdvisor, and uh, I think creating this wonderful environment and vibe. And it was going, I suppose, well enough that we. Uh, got an unsolicited offer from a, a Swiss investment group for 7.5 million for the hotel against a basis of, of about five and a half million. So after, uh, on, on behalf of our investors, we love this hotel and we're sad to see it go, but on behalf of our investors, we sold the hotel uh, generating a 36% IRR uh, for our investors. I still go back to this hotel as a paying guest. Yeah, How? what was the holding period? Two years. Wow. Uh, Larry has a question. If you have unreliable financials, what metrics do you use to buy? How do you value the properties? Yeah, we do. Um, most of our markets uh, don't have um, star reporting. Star is uh, Smith Travel Research, and uh, they aggregate market data in major markets and mainly markets that have flagged franchise hotels and most, most of our markets don't have that data available. So we do kind of boots on the ground um, market research. We uh, go online and, and aggregate rate information. We go to the Chamber of Commerce and to understand what area occupancy is like. Um, we, um, we, we survey you know, different hotels in different ways. Sometimes we know general managers or operators and get, get information that way. Sometimes we have information on hotels that have sold um, that we've looked at but haven't bought. And so we have operating history from, from those sales. And um, so we, we build um, market data from, from the ground up and then build operating projections um, based, on, based on that information. Did I answer the question? Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, and uh, lastly, uh, Hotel, the Ellery, uh, our most recent hotel. This is in Northampton, Mass, home of uh, Smith College. Northampton's a super vibrant um, college town with great music scene uh, and, and art scene. A lot of expat New Yorkers who've moved there for work and for other things. Uh, terrific restaurants downtown. And this hotel sits almost adjoining the Smith College campus. And um, We'd been looking at this hotel. I have friends in Northampton, uh, had been driving by this hotel, had kind of snuck in and looked around, and it is just not meeting its its potential. It had been really let go, um, and, and yet in this amazing location, um, a prior non-conforming use, like, like so many of the other hotels, couldn't be built again. Um, we were, we approached the, the owners, were able to buy out the controlling partner. Um, the other partners stayed in. They, they wanted to see this hotel revitalized and they um, they saw its potential and they stayed in. Uh, and so we uh, were able to uh, to buy the hotel. 
and um, and, and move ahead with doing what we do. Uh, so we um, we changed the name. The, the old hotel had had no brand equity. My friends in North Northampton would not refer people to uh, the Autumn Inn was the old name to the previous hotel. Um, they would not refer friends and colleagues to the hotel. Uh, we changed the name to the Ellery, named after William Ellery Channing, who's a transcendentalist poet who had lived for a time in Northampton uh, back in the 1850s. We professionalized the operations, uh, uh, created this new logo, uh, built a new website. The old website was virtually non-functional, um, very hard to book a room, um, robust booking engine as with the other hotels, uh, redid our interiors, before and afters. What we want here is to create a um, serene, dignified, and comfortable, deeply comfortable night stay. Um, a lot of the people staying here are here uh, visiting Smith. They might be visiting relatives in the area, um, get a good bit of business travel. Here's the uh, lounge reception area. This is a uh, the picture on the right, this is a reproduction of Thomas Cole's painting, uh, The Oxbow. The Oxbow is a geographical feature just down the road um, from Northampton, brightened up the interiors. Um, let's see. Here's the uh, reception. And, and, and as with the other hotels, it's the same room, it's the same box, different uh, finishes, lighting, uh, furniture. Uh, in this hotel, um, we have what a uh, contrast. Please, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, this was really this was so. A lot of these hotels, we feel like it's it's not that hard. It's you know you can see what it needs to be um, when when you go into the hotel. Um, this hotel is, has not yet experienced a full uh, stabilized year. We we opened, we closed for renovations, reopened in the summer of 2019 got to March and had to close. We opened in the summer again, but we, we didn't get to a full stabilized year. So I don't have numbers to report, but I can say that um, the hotel surviving, it's living on, on its revenue. We've not had to do a capital call, which I think is a win uh, in, a, in a brand new hotel like this. And we have outperformed our competitive set. This is a market where Smith Travel Research does do market reporting. Um, so you, you select a, a other hotels you consider competitors and then report your own operate, operating performance to Smith and, and they will tell you how you're doing relative to your competitive set. In our most recent report, we were doing 129% um, of RevPAR, uh, revenue per available room, um, year to date against our comp set, which is, uh, we think, a pretty big win for a brand new hotel. Um, How many keys in this one? Yeah, uh, sorry, I should have said 30, 32 rooms. Uh, that's 30 regular rooms and two uh, suites. They're kind of extended stay type suites. Um, this was a $2.1 million buy. We're all in for um, 475, which is about 147,000 a key, uh, somewhat below replacement cost in a, um, a very high barrier to entry location where this hotel could not be built again. So, um, uh, last view. The hotel is this great fireplace, and we have a a, a drinks program um, where the very sort of residential style drinks program, where reception opens up this, this cabinet and it's got barware and stuff, and can pour uh, our guests a drink, and they can enjoy it by this fire. So, uh, how are we different? Um, one 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 quick question, please, Gordon here. Uh, do, they, do you put senior debt financing in place? If so, do they have a lender that follows them or do they go to a local lender? And two, do they, do you have the management themselves or do you outsource it? Yeah, I'll, I'll get to that. Um, but about the, about yeah, the yeah, financing. You to yeah. Well, no, I'm happy to answer now. Um, about the financing, um, we borrow from local lenders. We don't do CMBS, um, which we're really happy about now. Um, we like working with people who know us, who know the market, who know our deals, who you can pick up the phone and you can talk to. Uh, Deirdre and I guarantee the debt personally. That's 
our primary skin in the game in these deals. Um, so I think that answers the question about, about the debt. Um, about, um, about management, yeah, we, we like to work with a um, third party manager and I'll, I'll get into some more detail about that in a bit, but our, um, we, we don't have an aspiration to be the manager at these hotels. We wanna focus on uh, the look and the feel and, um, and financial performance uh, and kind of higher level stuff and not get um, in, involved in um, fixing the toilet on, on Christmas Eve or um, hiring the new front desk agent. Um, we want to dovetail with our operator um, to work on um, being sure that the hotel is positioned in the way we want it to be positioned. Um, so th there's others who are, are doing these kinds of projects. I showed you a few earlier. Um, there's Wilder Hotels, there's Sh Shelter Social Club in California. Liz Lambert, I mentioned. Joie de Vivre has been very successful, big company out in California. Not so many in New England doing these deals, um, even though there's a lot of hotels like this in New England and there's these great markets all over New England. Um, and we've, if you've all driven around places um, like Stowe and you see a wonderful hotel and you think, man, that has so much potential. Um, so so we're, we're one of the few doing this work in New England. We are, um, I think a different, a major differentiating factor with us and others is we have super low overhead. Um, it's just me and Deirdre, two non-salary partners. We contract everything out, um, counting, legal, when we need it, facilities inspections. Um, and that allows us to focus on uh, the success of our hotels uh, without having to fund uh, an inflexible internal expense structure. Uh, we are we are very hands on. Um, sometimes, to their chagrin, our operator describes us as the most hands on owner they work with. Um, but as I said earlier, in response to your question, thank you for that. Uh, not um, we, we find we can we can purchase third party operating services a really good number relative to what we get back, and uh, and allows us to really focus on what we do, the look and the feel of the hotel, planning improvements, and also finding a new deal, next deal. Um, we, um, we think relative to some of our peers that we are able to avoid the latest fashion. Um, we don't want our hotels to be time stamped in the year in which we do them. We want the, the feel of the hotel to respond to the, to the location and to the architecture of the hotel. Um, so that we create a durable aesthetic. Uh, and, and lastly, I think we're, we're pretty good at finding deals. We're good at finding off-market deals. People know us in New England. They know what we do. They tell us about deals. And, and for on-market deals, we're known because we're one of the few people doing these kinds of projects for our niche and we get referred um, to deals by, by brokers who know us. Uh, this concept is uh, scalable. Uh, in the Northeast, we, we did a study uh, and identified um, about $500 million worth of potential target hotels in the markets that we're looking at. Um, coastal Connecticut, Cape and the Islands, Hudson River Valley, the Berkshires, um, mountains of Vermont and New Hampshire, and, and Southern coastal Maine. We, we don't look at Northern Maine, it's, the season is just, it's just too short. Somebody said that in Northern Maine, as soon as you open the hotel, you begin to close it again for the season. Um, I'll talk quickly about risks. Um, I guess one risk is that the virus doesn't go away. Um, we don't wanna go there. We think it's, I think we all have some hope that we're gonna get out of this thing. Um, that said, we've done pretty well during the pandemic. Um, our hotels are in drive-to markets where people can um, easily get in a car and get away. A um, bunch of our rooms, many of our rooms are exterior quarter, um, outside entry rooms. You go in and not encounter anybody. Um, and in, in recessions, uh, drive-to markets tend to do well because it's an easy vacation to get your head around. It's not a lot of moving parts. It's not very expensive. Uh, people still take vacations even in downtimes, and, and our markets tend to be 
uh, the first ones to, to recover. Um, a, a major competitive uh, um, thing that's mentioned with hotels is Airbnb. Um, we, we think that, we think hotels are here to stay. We think um, Airbnb, uh, there's plenty of room for hotels and Airbnb. Airbnb is, is perfect for, for some people and it's been perfect for me sometimes if I'm traveling with my family and I just want inexpensive lodging um, for five people uh, and I don't wanna buy two or three rooms. Um, but if you want peace of mind that your room's gonna really be there when you show up, if you want service. And I, I think more than anything, if you want that feeling of um, community, um, that energy and that vibe that comes with staying at a hotel, which is I think part of the vacation that a lot of people want to take. The, the hotel is foundational to the experience. Um, you're going to go to a hotel. And um, a last thing that we uh, struggle with um, is labor shortages. These markets um, are famously um, tough with staffing, and we address that by working with a, um, a good third party operator who has um, uh, the ability to track talent through um, rational, clear terms of employment, fair wages, uh, not all these things don't apply to a lot of businesses in these markets. Uh, the ability to move up within our hotels and also within their portfolio. So kind of another aspect of working with a third party operator is they have this deep bench of, of, of talent and also the ability to to attract employees and move them around within their system. So if we lose a general manager, they can usually find one within their portfolio of hotels. Uh, and looking ahead, um, so far our funding has been uh, friends and family pass the hat equity. And as I mentioned, uh, uh, debt with community banks. We like working with community banks. We probably like to stay with that. Um, we're looking for new equity relationships to do additional deals and do um, larger deals. Larger hotels are, are not more complicated than smaller hotels. Uh, we know that having to, done the Harbor Hotel, um, the biggest one of, of the group, 129 rooms, um, they just cost more money, but the, the workload is more or less the same. Um, and uh, Perspective returns. We, as I said, we like to buy to 10 cap uh, or better. Um, we finance these about 65, 35, 35 percent equity, 65 percent debt. Um, so far, we've been borrowing at um, uh, less than five percent, and we want to see in our financial modeling um, initial yields, cash cash yields of eight percent or better. Um, stabilized uh, cash cash yields at 15% or better and average yields uh, cash cash over the life of a project and in and, and these models that's five to seven years uh, of 12% uh, of or better. Um, and you're, and you're setting up an SPV for each deal and you invest that way? Yes, yes, exactly. Um, yeah, we have a, uh, an ownership entity for each deal um, an asset management entity for each deal. Yeah. Um, the, um, we're looking at IRRs of 18 to 25% um, for each deal over a five to seven year period. We really want to hold these hotels longer. We think it makes sense to, to hold them longer. They start to really spin off cash. Um, in the you know, seventh, tenth year, you're, you're, you're spinning off uh, high teens cash, cash. Uh, but we, honor the wishes of our investors. Uh, so far, uh, every one of our hotels has made money with the exception of the Ellery, which is too soon. Uh, we think that will make money. We've never lost uh, a single invested dollar. Um, and we're always looking at, um, at new deals. Uh, I'll give you a quick example of one that we've had our eye on in, uh, in Stowe. We'd like to get back to Stowe. We like that market. Uh, this is the Stowflake. It's one of the big three hotels in town. It's 117 rooms. It was one of the best hotels in town for a time, um, for a long period of time. It's uh, now uh, undercapitalized, a uh, bit of a leadership issue. It's family owned. And so there's uh, 
family issues in terms of, of leadership. Um, this is, uh, but, but all the potential in the world, central location, right where, where you wanna be, um, still has good um, kind of vibes in the market, um, good, good uh, goodwill towards this hotel, but needs an uplift. Uh, it's a, uh, by our model, a $21 million um, all-in cost. Uh, 3565 financing would um, result in a seven and a half million dollar equity piece and 13 and a half in debt. Um, our model uh, shows us doing an unlevered IRR of uh, about 13 percent, levered IRR of 22 percent, and um, uh, the model, which was uh, done in this case on a 10 year horizon, shows a four times uh, equity multiple. Uh, so, thank you. Uh, that's that's the end of my presentation. I, I appreciate everybody attending. And um, uh, if you have any questions, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to answer them. Yeah, we have had some good questions and here's a, a couple more from Jim. He says, are you consistently getting 65% leverage with your senior debt? It yes. Sounds high. No, that, that's, about, that's about, in our experience, that's about right for a hotel deal. I wouldn't want to go higher but no 65 percent is what we've been getting great and then he says in light of covid and the stress on hospitality do you still see lenders providing financing as you have seen it in the past not right now um uh it's going to be this winter um hard or impossible to to put debt on a new hotel acquisition i i believe that will change um you know, hotels are not going away. It's just going to be a tough winter um, with respect to um, putting financing on new deals. Yep. Interesting. Is uh, Are any of the data providers, some of which you mentioned, um, perhaps others about travel, have any metrics on the trend of people traveling in their car rather than getting on planes to take a break with their families? Yeah, that's the kind of thing that gets discussed in, um, you know, the industry newsletters and webinars and things that, that one pays attention to. Yeah, I mean, that's what drive to markets are killing it. Um, and I don't remember, you know, specific numbers, but but if you need to get in an airplane to go there, you're not doing well. And if um, some people, this is not true of our hotels, we're doing pretty well. Some places claim to be doing better than they ever were pre-pandemic because there's so few options for getting away. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Um, it's only a one data point, but that's all I've been doing is staying in hotels for since May. More, yeah. or less. I mean that's not exactly true, but sixty percent of the time yeah. um, uh, doesn't mean that others are. But uh, I think there's definitely a trend there. Larry has a question: Do you have a setup for the next project, and how much money could you? Uh, or do you want to deploy over the next three years? Well, the, I mean, the next project, the one that's 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 front and center on our radar is 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 the Snowflake, uh, twenty one million dollar deal, uh, seven five in equity. We have to um, deal with the debt piece. I think that probably happens by um, putting the hotel under contract, subject to financing with a longer horizon. Any anybody selling a hotel now knows that that there's gonna to have to be some waiting um, to be done to get the debt in place. Um, so that's a, that's a seven uh, and a half million dollar check. And that's about, that's about as, that's enough project. That's, that's a nice deal that would keep us busy for, um, you know, for a solid couple of years. And what's the, what's the investor base look like now? You don't have to tell me who they are, but do you have 10, 15, 20 investors? Do most people roll into the next deal that you're doing? What's how you? Uh, we have uh, eight or so. Yeah, yeah, eight or so investors, um, ranging from pretty small money up to over a million dollars. A million and a half is a for a time a, a two one investment was our biggest, and then we we sold a couple projects. Yeah, that last project that you guys flipped. Yeah. That was just good for you. Timing, timing's good. Yeah. Uh, Jim is another question here. 
you mentioned a large investor in your first deal. Did they re-up on the other deals? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm trying to think. Uh, we haven't had any investors uh, who haven't stayed on for subsequent deals. We've, we've made money for everybody. So once we started making the money, they, um, they've stayed on. It might be totally idiosyncratic on each investor's tax situation, but are you structured in a way where they can roll things in without taking in current income? And I'm not asking you to give tax advice, but is there yeah. a accommodation for that? Um, we just issue K-1s, um, yeah, yeah for, for each project at, at, at the end of each year. So it is different for each person. I mean, some people invest as, as a corporation, some people invest individually. Yeah. Totally, totally makes sense. Is there a target shelf life for each deal? Well, um, we we um, honor the needs of our investors. Um, so uh, we have underwritten to five to seven year hold. We've underwritten to a 10 year hold. Um, we think it doesn't make sense to sell the hotels at all unless you get a really great offer like the Stohoff where you know it's just, it's just uh, too good to pass up. But something like um, I mean, the, the, the Shire right now just throws off great money every year and it's hard to replicate that kind of return. Um, I don't think our investors in that deal want to sell it. Uh, we don't want to sell it. But it really depends on, on the investor group. Uh, but we, we make a we have an understanding at the beginning um, of, of how this is going to go. In that case, that's um, by consensus. Have you been able to leverage the uh, cost seg and all that depreciation and all that business and in the holding or the SPV and then pass it through? I'm sorry, ask again, please. The cost segregation, depreciation, all the goodies that come yeah, out. Yeah, that all flows through. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, so there's some nice um, uh, write-offs that can occur. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So um, of the of if anybody in the group is interested in chatting further with you and giving you low-cost debt, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, or equity or both right it's the equity we really need is the, yeah. the debt you know it is a tough time right now with debt but i think i honestly think that's a short term situation it's these deals um i should have said at the beginning um these these deals because they're not uh they're not flagged properties you know we're not doing la quinta at logan airport yeah. uh and they're in these leisure markets they're outside the scope of what most private equity wants to get involved in. Um, it's so off their radar, yeah. Off their radar, and which is why we can buy them at a 10 cap. So there, there's not a ton of competition. Um, they're a little, they tend to be a little bit too big for the, the one guy, um, but they're a little too small for somebody who wants to deploy um, 50 million bucks at a, at a whack. Uh, and that's good for us because we can buy them at a good number, but it also creates a challenge with um, capitalizing the deals. Uh, so, um, yeah, that, that's that's kind of the, the advantage, but also creates the need for new equity relationships. Yeah, totally makes sense. A mm -hmm. um, couple of final questions here. Uh, what is the ownership breakdown between equity partners and you and your partners? And I think that the leading question into you know, what's the promote and all that business? Yeah, we, we do a fairly simple waterfall structure. Um, we've done a, a couple of them, but a, an example of one deal is a 9% preferred return to investors and then 70-30 split uh, for any available cash after that, uh, 30 to Saltaire and 70 to our investors. And do you catch up this? this the... yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we yeah. catch up the, uh, the preferred return. Excellent. Well, uh, thank you all and uh, for joining in today. Uh, please, if there's any final questions, bring them along. They're most welcome. And as you can see, uh, and I'm going to say this and first caveat and saying I have no skin in the game except I like Bob. Um, and, like you too, Arthur. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, but you can see uh, not only is Bob uh, easy to deal with, but 
uh, also is see, uh, knows what he's doing based on performance. Um, it was in, I really appreciated you going into the first example of what didn't work because often people wait till the end until they're asked about that. Right? You mean the hotel deal that didn't get done. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 I appreciate you doing that in advance very much. Um, and uh, Larry, to answer your question directly and everybody else in the audience here, we will be uh, giving Bob the list of people who registered and also participated. And so he'll be in touch with you directly and you can feel free to contact him and discuss uh, whatever you care to discuss with them in terms of uh, being involved. And uh, um, yes, please be in touch with any questions. I'm happy to be pestered with, with any, any questions you may have. Yep, it looks like uh, Richard has one question here. Let's see. Oh, he just is a very nice comment. Beautiful value at work. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, it's really stunning. It's absolutely stunning stuff. Really, really nice. Thanks a lot. Yeah, and well, you know, that's the part about hotels being more fun than building condos. No doubt, no yeah. doubt. And I and I know all these areas. We had this chat before because I'm a New Englander at, uh, originally, and so I know exactly where all these places are. So, super cool. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Bob. We'll Everybody, see. thank you for 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 uh, tuning in. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it. All Thank right. you all Stay for safe, all. sharing with you with us. The only thing you can't make more of, and that's your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.